Hi, I'm Jeff Coughlin, and as you can see, we're making good progress on this FX Hawkarica Mark One Tropical. And what we've done here is assemble all the internals, which are the gun bay and the, the main cockpit framework and tubing that is to be painted aluminium. In this case, we're going to use um, Humbrol Acrylics, um, Humbrol 56, which is a good uh, aluminium color, base color. Um, and in order that we can do that, I think it's a really good idea if you kind of undercoat in effect, base coat um, all the metallic areas that you, you want to paint with a gloss black. Gloss black is a really good base color because it helps the reflective qualities of the metallic paint that's going to come afterwards. Um, and also but helps to provide some really nice um, shadowing effects that you'll get inside the cockpit and particularly inside the gun bay. I'm actually only, only going to open the uh, the port wing gun bay here, which is why I've added the guns here and not on the right hand side. We'll just um, we'll just have um, the bays shut on the bay shut on the right uh, and the open bay here on the left. Um, okay, so how do we go about um, spraying this acrylic um, paint to start with? Well, we're going to need um, acrylic thinner, and um, we'll use the Humbrol. Uh, uh, product for that. I think as a general rule, I, I don't know, this is a good opportunity perhaps just to um, just to make the point that uh, for me and in, in all the years I've been doing this stuff, I've just found it far simpler to use the own manufacturer's products throughout the, uh, the, the, the process where you can. Sometimes you don't have a, 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 an appropriate paint match or maybe a paint is out of production or for whatever reason you can't get hold of. Um, all the paints in the same range well that's not that's not so much of an issue um, provided they're compatible so in this case we're using acrylic Humbrol acrylic water-based uh, paints which are fine uh, but um, rather than use water which can often give you quite a grainy finish to the paint when it sprays uh, onto the model um, it's better I think to use Humbrol's acrylic thinner and the reason for that is, is that it's got some really good retardant qualities that just help the paint um, stay um, stay in solution until it hits the model and then of course we'll, we'll, we'll dry as we go. Um, okay, so the first step in the process is to um, add our black base. And so, as I said, gloss black is good. So gloss, Humbrol Gloss 21 is, is, is an ideal paint um, for that. So we'll just um, prepare that as we go. Good shake to start with. That's um, rarely ever going to be enough in its own right. So then we'll need to just open up paint pot. Use an old bulldog clip for that, seems to do the job. Uh, get that opened up here. And then I personally use an old um, paintbrush just to get in there and make sure that that is properly uh, mixed up. Because often you'll get the sediment that settles to the bottom and you'll want that all mixed up properly. It's recommended you do this for around about 45 seconds or thereabouts. Uh, no bad idea, that seems to me about right. It seems uh, kind of spot on. Because the paint, as you'll see here, is it's thick. You know, that, that's in, it's intended to be so. Um, you're never really ever going to use it straight out of the pot. We're looking to thin this. Um, and that's going to be essential if you're going to spray it. And well, and, and even if you're going to hand paint uh, any of these acrylics, you're going to need to thin them. And that's why we use the Humbrol acrylic thinner. So, um, yeah, that certainly looks mixed up to me. There's no hard, um, there's no hard uh, pig pigment in the bottom. So I've got two little um, plastic cups here that I use for, 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 for mixing. Um, so the idea is, for me anyway, to decant some of the paint out of the pot into one of the mixing um, buckets over here and um, ideally um, not to kind of waste it because um, I just think it's, it's, it, it's good to try and sort of mix what you need and then if you need to you can mix more afterwards. Well, this is just straight black, it's not like we're doing a, a complex paint mix, it's just straight black so it shouldn't be a problem. And so for, for me we can just take a few drops off here. One, two, three, four, so five generous drops there. 
six. Okay, it's probably enough, I would think. So we'll just, this is not overly scientific. I don't think it needs to be. You know, modeling should be fun. We shouldn't get too hung up on exactly what are we using here? How much of this, how much of that? I think you've just got to kind of go with your experience. If you've got some, which is great and then use a bit of common sense. So what we're after here is about a 50-50 mix. So we'll get uh, get rid of the gloss black. Personally, I'll keep the whatever paint is left on there ju just for the moment. So we'll just pop our mixing stick out of the way for a second. And then we'll bring in our thinner. And I've got a pipette I'll use for that because it's very thin. One, two, three, four, five, six. So that's about kind of about 50 50 um, but of course we've got a little bit of extra paint still on our stick and I just think we can use that to, to mix it in just rolling around the stick to get off um, any of the extra paint so it's a little bit more than 50 50 just slightly more paint to to um, to thinner and what we're looking for is to see that paint, um, it's got to be, it's got to give enough coverage, um, but it doesn't need to be um, too thick. You don't want it too thick. You don't want it too thin either. Um, so, it, you know, people often say, you know, try and look for the consistency of milk. Well, I think that's quite a good, um, that's quite a good indicator in the great scheme of things. Probably semi-skimmed is quite good. Um, not skim milk, but semi-skimmed be quite good. Um, so we go for that. All right, um, and then we can just get rid of the excess and then we're pretty much good to go. So we'll move everything else out of the way. Um, for the purposes of the exercise, let's bring in the box top, the useful little spray booth for the moment. It is water-based, so it's not overly toxic, which is always good. Personally, I, I, I do like to use uh, an extractor fan. Um, always, always useful, I think, to get rid of any of the um, any of the um, particles um, get those out of the way um, but for the purposes of this um, it is a well ventilated room I'm, I'm spraying in so that's not too bad and all we do is just decant some of this into my airbrush and I've got a fairly um, simple airbrush here it's a quite a cheapy it's only it's a premier g35 it's about 50 quids worth of airbrush actually a really a really uh, um, useful bit of kit I, I think uh, for the for the money really really useful um, and all we do is decant that into the cup and I'm spraying on about um, 16, 17 PSI. Um, and that would just be ready to hand paint, of course, if you wanted to, to do that. And then uh, we're good to go. So all we need to do is, or in this case, we'll just use the seat as, as a starter for 10. And we're just looking to kind of keep the airbrush on the move, keep our part on the move, and steadily build up the paint. It doesn't need um, to be thrown on here any great speed. It doesn't need to be put on too thickly. What we're looking to do is just to apply it as we go. Okay, so that's that's kind of gone on there. Then we can move over to um, our main section that we're looking to spray just now. So probably about seven, eight centimeters away. We're looking to try and work this into the recesses. This is just a base, that's all we're looking for, it's just a base. base. Getting to those nooks and crannies in there. I'm 
it's got a nice uh, gloss finish to um, to the areas we're spraying already, which is good. Okay. Um, so that's um, that's about it in terms of that. Very simple, straightforward stuff in terms of our base. So the gloss has gone on there. Um, so we'll leave that to dry now. For me, it's important just to leave that alone, um, leave it overnight, come back the next day. Um, and then we can have a look at applying a 56 aluminium. The gloss pack that we applied for our base earlier has um, has dried nicely now. I've actually only given it about three or four hours, but um, I think it's good to, to go and um, apply our 56, which is our aluminium. And um, so we're going to be using uh, the acrylic again, of course, um, 56 aluminium. And let's just get the items to be sprayed, which is all the internal cockpit tubing, and gum bays and so on. In, uh, into the box and mix up this 56. It's gonna need quite a bit of stirring this. Um, I think the, instru the instructions on the, uh, or the note on the bottle says about 45 seconds, but um, I actually gave this a couple of minutes of stirring um, a short while ago and it's mixed in the sediment, which is exactly what you want. You want to have got rid of all of that, which, which is great. Okay, so, I have actually stirred that now probably for about two, maybe two and a half minutes. So all we need to do is decant some of that into a little mixing uh, tub here. So uh, some drops, um, two, three, four, five. Okay, that will do I think with whatever's left on the stick. Move our 56 out of the way and then get a similar number of drops of Humboldt acrylic thinner. Two, three, four, five, six, six. There we go, that's that. And then using the same stick, we can just mix all that in. So you've got a nice thin mix developing there, which is good. Looking a bit more aluminium than it did in the uh, in its uh, its bottle, which or its uh, its tub, which looked a little bit more grey to me. But that's uh, just the nature of of the paint. So that's looking okay. That's looking again about this sort of milky type consistency. Hopefully that's um, that's thick enough. It's got enough pigment in there. I think it probably has. So I think we'll give it a go. That's our airbrush. And just decant that into here. Just get it all in there. Okay, that's probably enough for the moment. All right, and then the trick, I think, if there is one with this, is to make sure that um, you keep the airbrush moving, just just with any kind of good um, good good practice, really. And we'll just use our box top there as a bit of a spray booth, and gently build up this metallic um, finish. So don't forget that black base is a really useful um, primer in effect is what we're using it for. So that what we do is spray, I spray a little bit more aluminium on the areas that I really want to look pretty aluminium and less in the shadows and the areas where I, I, I don't. That way you end up with um, the benefit of the, the kind of in effect the kind of basing that you, we've done there with um, with the black. So there we go, it just gives you an idea. This um, 56 is uh, quite a dark aluminium, I would say, uh, in fairness. Um, so we'll leave that, that, that there, uh, I think that's fine. 
and then when it's all dry what we'll do is probably do some dry brushing with some um some brighter aluminium but we'll come on to that um later on we can show you i'll show you how, how we do that that'll just provide some highlights for for the parts um that we're spraying aluminium and then we can just work our way around the main uh, cockpit areas so this is mostly um trying not to get into all the, the recesses and crevices. it's really just to provide a nice metallic look so when you peer in the cockpit all those top areas that you can see are going to look um, aluminium. Just kind of the idea, really. So much more on the top, but less, of course, into the other areas. Then we're getting the benefit of that basing. And then a bit more into the bays. Now obviously there's some spot paint, some detail painting to be done in the gun bay there. The, gu the guns themselves will be painted gun metal. We'll, uh, we'll uh, be doing a bit of that later. But this is really just to try and bring out some of the, the metal aluminium areas. In fact, we're not going to be doing this uh, gun bay, are we? I said we'd be uh, keeping that intact, hence no guns in there. So there's, there's no need to do any more over there. Okay, well that's certainly enough, um, enough of the 56. Um, so just notice that, um, in fact if I bring the light in a bit more here, just bring that in a bit closer, try and get a bit more light on it. There we are. You can see that um, it's got a decent metallic finish to it. Hopefully you can see it's got quite, quite, quite a bit of depth to it. It's not just bright aluminium, which I think would look a bit too, uh, a bit too silly really in, in there um, and not very realistic. Um, so I think what we'll do is a little bit of dry brushing later on with some um, some um, more polished aluminium-y type uh, colour. Something just, just, just silvery really, just I think to highlight just some of those edges a little bit more. But we'll see. I'll wait and see how that dries. I think that's the best thing to do always and before you make any decisions like that. And then we can see, see how it all looks. But there we go. That's spraying 56. Um, Humbrol 56 acrylic paint. And hopefully you, um, you you like the way that's come out. Um, I'm pleased with it so far. Bearing in mind, we've done nothing else, have we? We've not done any washes yet. We've not done uh, anything like that. Um, so um, that, of course, will all, all come a little bit later on. And I'll show you how we could uh, we could do that using some of the other Humbrol products. But there we go. That's, um, that's the stage so far. And I uh, hope you like how we're coming on.